Well, two weeks ago, for the first time on this show, we went inside a sugar refinery. Although we've seen many mills, we were able to take a look at the end of the process where raw sugar turns into the white table sugar we all love, especially this time of year. While going to Louisiana sugar refiners was historical, the refinery itself has quite a history. This week, Twyla's Neil Malasson takes us back to LSR to see how this place has changed and changed history. The Louisiana Sugar Refinery is more than just a place that refines sugar. Nationally recognized for its importance, it's transformed many times on its way to being the modern processing facility you see now. This was once the home of Colonial Sugars, which made Dixie Crystal Sugar a brand many older Louisianians are familiar with. These old Colonial Sugar buildings now serve as the power plant for the rest of the facility. But this was once a neighborhood as much as a factory. Many of these homes on the property are also historic. Walking down Park Place Boulevard, LSR CEO Larry Fauché explains these homes now serve as offices. There are several buildings on this site that were um, in 1970 recognized to be part of the uh, U.S. Historical Society. One house in particular is known as the Blue House for the trim on the building. This was once the home of Dr. George Mead, a titan in sugarcane production. As we sit in the backyard with Larry, he says Mead's importance to the sugar production in Louisiana cannot be overstated. George Mead came along, and George Mead is really the guy most instrumental in developing the process as we know it today. Uh, he wrote the first sugarcane handbook, which is worldwide known. Uh, that book describes how you take raw sugar, convert it to a refined sugar, and it's still in use today. The home is now used for entertaining, kept to the standards of Mead's day. It served a similar purpose back then, too. In fact, Mead would invite famed oceanographer Jacques Cousteau over. Both Cousteau and Mead had an interest in herpetology, and Mead raised snakes and turtles, which Cousteau would use as specimens for study. George ran this facility for 30 years. Quite a colorful character. Uh, his wife, uh, was heavily involved in swimming to the point she was part of the U.S. Olympic Committee. Blue House aside, the property also has an old church that once served the community here. Fauché says while it's no longer a neighborhood, the past is very much kept alive here in the present. So his process took raw sugar and converted it into a refined product that then could ship across the country and maintain its characteristics and uses. Uh, that book helped define all the various technical phases. Uh, and sugar engineering is actually the founder for what we now know as chemical engineering. There's a lot more to the history of LSR and sugarcane production in Gramercy. We'll put a link to some of those resources online at twilighttv.org. And guys, there's, like I said, there's just so much more to the story. It's just so unusual. I mean, you can see by these pictures, you know, it's like a neighborhood on yeah. the property of this sugar refinery. And they, they treat it like such. And of course, with all the workers who are, you know, most of whom live within walking distance of the place, it's yeah. got this family atmosphere amidst this modern sugarcane production while 300 trucks are moving in and out of the place every single day. And it's so intimately tied to the community. For instance, one thing I didn't show in the story is there's this uh, old restaurant place called Nobles and mm -hmm. it's third generation just like uh, Larry the CEO there of LSR. It's uh, uh, the guy who owns it is third generation. He, there's an 18th, uh, 19th century bar that's oh, wow. there and everybody who's everybody in Gramercy is there. The emails who have the their sugar cane right next door to LSR were eating lunch in there one day when I went in there. So, you know, there's just so much to this community and so it's it's just integral. I, you can't see one without the other. I know we were talking earlier before we went on camera just about how we have so many places involved in agriculture that have this rich history and you see these historical markers everywhere you right. go. I know you really you really love to see that. I do. And hopefully we're going to do a lot more showing these historical places because I really think it shows that agriculture is not just tied here to our modern world, but it's always had this place. And in fact, before a lot of what we know about Louisiana was Louisiana, agriculture was there doing this kind of stuff. So hopefully we'll get to see a lot more of things like that in the future. Well, I look forward to it. Thank you very much, Neil Malasso. Sweet, sweet Neil. Sweet, sweet Neil. <laughs> Still to come on Twyla. You may love sweet, sweet Neil and sweet potatoes, but do you know what's best for them? Coming up, a look at the researchers who make life pretty sweet. Stay with us.